Everything that happens to you is a result of every decision you've ever made. At least here in the West is women are extremely selective, but for all the wrong things. Right, that better not be the Tom Cruise they're talking about. This one is from internationaldating.com. Are Chinese women really left over? Why do women in China search for men outside of China? I mean, why do they do that? Why not just marry a nice man from Wuhan and be done with it? Why would you use an agency to try to find someone from the United States or from Canada or from Australia or somewhere? Historically, China is polygamous, meaning that historically wealthy men had, had multiple concubines. wives. They had concubines. Right. Right. Um, so they would have one official wife and then they would have um, a number of concubines, depending on how much money he had, and this was all legal, and it was not outlawed until 1949. And today, there's an informal revival of this traditional Ooh. tradition of mistress keeping, and some of the women that have been in my study are women who were these informal mistresses of wealthy politicians and businessmen, and then by the time they hit 40, they have been aged out of that role, and he may have bought you a house, a car, right? Or an so apartment. He may have given you something, but, right, but you, he doesn't have to. There's no structure that forces well, him. Well, if he didn't... Yeah, but if you're the concubine, that's what you're going to demand. You have to get something, because you'll never be the number one woman. You'll never be the one he's officially out in public with. You're just the extra. Huh. So they only outlawed this, this in 49, eh? All right. And then maybe you would not have entered into that relationship with him. So it's an informal. Is there a contract a, up front when you enter into that? Or no, no, no it's, legal. Informal. it's all informal it's all because informal. this is not legal. This is not. This is all now illegal. It's not legal. illegal. Yeah, okay. Right now it's illegal. So I divide my women into two different class sectors. So uh, one group, which I call the financially privileged, the other is more financially deprived. And the privileged women became very financially successful in the post-reform era. So they're advantaged financially, but a lot of their Chinese ex-husbands, once they become wealthy, they traded the wives in for a younger woman or they cheated on them. So they, they feel that it's harder for them to then remarry a man of that. Um, imagine that some men in America are some foreign women's ideal without the millions of dollars. Yeah, it's the effect of being exotic in the other part of the world. When you're different, it's attractive. It's just the natural human thing. That's all you guys should be traveling, especially if you're struggling over here or don't feel like you can find anyone you mesh well with or anybody that may be as traditional as you want, etc. You have a million reasons. That stature, and even if they could find someone that's willing to marry them, he's likely to cheat. So they're looking for a nice guy and they feel that nice guys um, don't exist in China. And then <laughs> there are the men who are uh, not, sorry, there are women who are not as financially well off. And those women experienced uh, economic decline in the post-reform era. So a lot of these were women who worked in state-owned factories back when they were younger. And with the reform and opening up, a lot of those factories shut down. So the women essentially lost their jobs and so did their husbands. But the problem is that a lot of their husbands, after losing their jobs, instead of going out and starting your small business or getting a job, some of these men got into um, drugs and alcoholism and they were not able to get their life together. So these women were divorcing their husbands who were shirking their family responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to look for someone who's more uh, responsible and they feel that it's hard to find in China based on their previous experience so they want to move to the West. With the Chinese Cultural Revolution which happened in over the span of 10 years 1966 to uh, 1976 and I think a lot of people because of the upheaval and the destruction of family because of the, the political crisis that had taken place in the country. I, th I feel a lot of people feel that a lot of the love and the bonds in their um, lives have been destroyed. And then with the whoever said that grill, that's fixable. Boys don't trip. The advent of capitalism and capitalism <laughs> coming in, um, a lot of people feel that money is the only thing that matters. So there's a lot of rampant materialism in wow. China, actually, in the post-reform era. And people don't feel 
bad or sad or upset if they have to leave their home country because so much of the the good things, um, the the love and the bonds have been wiped out. So they feel well. I have so many sad memories in my home country. I don't give up. I don't have any qualms leaving. So among financially successful men, they're in this tricky situation where they're used to dating a man of a certain caliber. So they they don't want to just date the average ordinary Chinese, Chinese men, but then those those high status financially successful men want twenty year olds. They want twenty year olds. So these women <laughs> feel like, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to seek something else somewhere else and leave China. That's their solution、Please. to the、yeah. dilemma. Um, is speaking of this one woman, Steve. Thank you so much for this channel. It's inspired me to make a plan and leave the U.S. and live abroad and have a plan in place. Hell yeah, man! Listen, you're in control of your life, guys. Everything that happens to you is a result of every decision you've ever made. There are no accidents. Your circumstances are exactly what you deserve based on the things you've done up until that point. Society tries to tell you otherwise that you can externalize your problems or that your problems are because of something else. That's not true. That is not true at all. The real power comes when you learn you're in control of everything, and that's what they don't want you to know. Man comes to mind. So she had married a man who,、um, who other people at the agency says is out of her league in the way of looks because he looks like a Western movie star,、wow. like Tom Cruise, and、okay. um, but he was a few years younger and less affluent, and she fell in love. Brother, better not be the Tom Cruise they're talking about. Better get some LASIK. Hope you see better. Love and that she felt that that was the relationship she wanted because she owned a lot of property in China, and for her, it's just a divestment of her assets from China to dollar store cruise <laughs> the U.S. Right? If she's going to invest in a business or buy a property in the U.S., it's it's it's, it's the money is not disappearing. She's just moving it from one location to another, and she gets to be with the. Person that is kind to her and that she's attracted to, so why not, right? So you you can see some women, that's something they want, and then there are other women who feel that they may want someone within their social economic class, so they share similar tastes in fine dining or travel, so on and so forth. And I see those women marrying Western men of similar class level in their home countries. So wealthy. Older Chinese women are m- marrying foreign men, Western men of similar age and wealth. Okay. So I see both.、Okay. It's not a、um, one answer to fit all. Okay.、And、Is that because the wealthier counterparts, the Chinese men, have、uh, already been married with concubines? <laughs> Neil, thanks, brother. What will be the end result of nearly every woman demanding a top five to ten percent man? Well, apparently, considering what we saw with the mouse utopia experiment, societal collapse. How would you、um, describe the phenomenon of the forgotten woman in China, the, the women, the women that are the leftover women、um, that we hear about? I mean, is that a real thing? And what would you? Would you- Someone's saying polygamy, but it's not going to be polygamy. Polygamy is just one of the end stage symptoms of the whole collapse happening. What'd you say about that? You know, interestingly, the leftover women is a real phenomenon in China, and I think the term, at least, it used to refer mostly. To、uh, professional women in their late twenties and early thirties, or even mid thirties, who are single, professionally successful, and、um, wanting to marry. So actually, we don't see too many of those at the agencies I'm looking at. The agents in the agencies where I study, it's, it's mostly middle-aged, divorced women who are seeking second chance marriages、okay. or mistresses of. Very wealthy Chinese businessmen who have aged out of their their、uh, uh, job, of quote unquote, their role. Their role. He has a new mistress. Yeah,、so、yeah. yeah. Who's younger? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the the technically, if you're thinking about leftover women and what I just described, those women are not the <laughs> primary clientele at my agency, and I think part of the reason is because they have this robust career that they want to develop in China, and they feel that if they move to a different country. It's hard to take that with them, so they're those are the one, not the ones that are seeking to marry and migrate. But for the older women, right? They've already lived their lives. So many of the women that are financially successful, they already have that success. They don't necessarily. If you're already 50 years、mm-hmm. old, you've already done everything you wanted to do in life. So 
It, hey, well, not hopefully yet. not. Not, right. yeah. <laughs> not, not right. everything, but for, like no, no, yeah. do some things. Yeah, you gotta get to you still. But okay, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Well, so the man wants to. Yeah, it's not more of an economic thing. thing. You're not so worried. Uh, that she has no, as much or more money. No, than no, they no. Do. A lot of men today are very happy to date women who is my friend financially successful than himself. Oh, it's looked good. as as something that's positive. Okay. Yeah, okay. because and there are lots of men that are willing to date um, older, more financially successful. Okay successful women, but it's the women that actually don't want to date down. That's what hypergamy. I don't know if she knows about that word. Women will not settle with a man lesser than them. We have beaten that with the stick for eternity. There's no point even mentioning it anymore. It's all it's the same thing in the rest of the world. There it is. Why the left a lot of the leftover women feel like they're stuck because they're not willing to date a man who's less financially successful than themselves, but then the ones that are as financially successful think they're too old. That's essentially what's happening. Okay. So in China today, parents are expected to purchase homes or at least put down a down payment for your children, and especially if you have a boy, because the boy is expected to mm. own a home in order to propose a to a girl because oh. she would want that's a hell of an expectation i don't mind that at all so in order to propose to a woman you need to have your own home so they're still treating men like men out there eh? very interesting him to have that ready to go at the time of marriage and it's usually the man's responsibility or the man's side of the family so because of that uh, having a boy can be a big financial burden down the line. And this is why uh, when it comes to remarriage, a lot of men are not interested in marrying a woman who ha has a son because that means that he will have to help um, fund for the son's home in before he marries. Very interesting. I did not know that. Uh, so I wish we had that. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have to think about that. So if you are a woman in China and you have a daughter, you're telling me that it would be easier. It would be easier. There would be more men interested in a second marriage with you versus if you had a son. And that's a real social fact. We had a, we had a gentleman that we interviewed not too long ago um, who went to China um, on his own. He met a woman just writing through our site and he went and he met her and he just fell in love with her and he stayed there for a few months and he got married to her while he was there and then he brought her back and about two years later he called us and said john i just want to let you guys know how happy we are and how oh, thankful we nice. are that you guys helped us and then we actually went and did an interview with them and then tanya and i later went and had dinner with them because they live about an hour up north um and he was telling me how great her family was in China and how supportive her family was in China when he came over to meet her. I mean, they, he said they were like my family, you know, very shortly they were opening, they were warm, they were friendly, supportive, really supportive. Do you think in general, uh, the, the family of these Chinese women are supportive when they go to meet a foreign man? I think for the most part, yes. I've seen occasionally some examples where the family has not been supportive, but the majority of them have, and including the, the stepchildren, they're oftentimes very supportive because they've seen their mother live a very difficult life, struggle to support them mm -hmm. or struggle through the father's affairs. And they're just finally happy that their mom can have a build a life for herself after raising the children. So they really want this to work out and they are really happy to for the mom okay. and the, the parents as well, right? For these yeah. older women that are getting their second chance marriage so that they want to be supportive. And also China is a very family oriented society. So once there's a marriage in the works, everyone wants this to last. Good. Okay. Yeah. There's not a big divorce culture in China, at least not in the traditional culture. Divorce is not something that, people feel comfortable with. Mm. Okay. It's kind of like the Philippines. Where, yeah, uh, divorce is really, yeah, not it's illegal taboo. for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It was illegal, yeah, in the Philippines yeah. for a long time. Damn. It's really hard to find someone who you are sexually compatible with and emotionally compatible with and intellectually compatible with and finding someone who is compatible with you in all these different ways and, and to have a lot in common with you in terms of hobbies and interests. So it's a, it comes down to a numbers game, right? The more people you 
open yourself up to, the greater your chance of finding someone that is a good more, fit. A good fit for you. Oh, you so, warmed my heart with that because I've been saying that for years that it's a numbers game. Guys. It is a numbers, it's a numbers game. game. It you, is. You have to meet a lot of people. It amazes me that, like you said, I think on your side of the freeway, these guys stay in these small little towns and okay, Mary and Sue. Well, let's see, Mary or Sue, Mary or Sue. You know, and and it's like really. I mean, to me, you've got to meet a lot of different people to try to find, and maybe maybe you have a hundred soulmates. I don't the thing is, it's a numbers game for men. For women, it's about properly choosing. Women are on the choosing side of the equation. They have to properly vet men so they don't pick the wrong one. Men have to talk to a bunch of women and compete in that manner. So telling women they have to do the same, basically, like dating strategy as men talk to a ton of people, it's not really what it is. Women should be ideally women need to be extremely selective with the men they talk to to ensure the best outcome because women are against the clock they shouldn't be wasting their time on bums and the problem with modern dating and society today at least here in the west is women are extremely selective but for all the wrong things see women aren't really taught what actually matters in a man in a relationship in a potential family they're just taught to be very selfish is he hot is he chad can he dick me down in the way I need him to? Is he a bad boy? They look for all the red flags, but to them, that's a green flag because he's so exciting because he's so whatever. You know, that's just fatherless activities. That's a sign of a father not being present in the home, teaching her what a man is, what's a value in a man, and guiding her in those directions. That's just her learning from social media, from all the toxic, uh, what is it, reality TV culture that she watches? Yeah, exactly. She's learning to be angry, loud, combative. I got my own money, whatever, da, 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 da. And that they're set up for failure, unfortunately. They're set up to pick the wrong man. Is this a small channel? Interesting.